Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Galvin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, please make sure to subscribe now. Hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really happen know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the video. Hi you all, how are you guys doing wherever you are right now, whatever time zone you're watching me right now? Good morning, good afternoon, and good night just in case I don't get to see you. Isang palibagong nursing lecture nga ang ali ko sa inyo for today and another week of nursing uh, lectures and discussions, concept, and uh, learning about more uh, regarding nursing. Now, this is another entry natin sa ating mental health and psychiatric nursing. As you can see on the video, as you can see on the title, this is about uh, the associative disorder, or which is another concept in our mental health and psychiatric nursing. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing, uh, mental health discussion, uh, nursing, yeah, nursing mental health discussion na ginawa ko dito sa akin channel. I have a playlist of it um, whenever the icon button pops out, check them out. And uh, also check the description box because the playlist to the mental health and psychiatric nursing is going to be there together with all of my playlist in nursing, nursing education. Napakarami na nga po. Last week, I completed all the lectures, the three lecture videos I, uh, that I uh, that I promised for you. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung last week's video, kasi three times a week nga ako nag upload panoorin mo sila na andyan sila lahat sa aking YouTube channel. Now, let this be your nursing study guide sa pag-aaral mo na the uh, dissociative disorder. If you haven't heard about this mental illness, this disorder, this is now the day that you are going to have a full grasp and full mastery and lecture regarding this type of disorder. You guys, bago tayo mag-proceed, gusto, gusto ko lang kayong pasalamatan kasi tuloy-tuloy nga yung pag, <coughs> excuse me, ano ba nangyayari? Tuloy-tuloy nga at parami na nga tayo ng parami dito sa ating channel sa Team Galve. Maraming maraming salamat po for all of your support. We are moving towards 20,000 subscribers so fast. You guys are amazing. Thank you thank you so much for all your love and support for making that happen. Keep on sharing. Keep on um, liking my videos. Share, share it, it to your friends, to all of your social media accounts. Whichever way, because that is your way of spreading the news about the channel and letting the other nurses, nursing students, and nursing professionals know that certain channels regarding nursing exist and on YouTube. Kaya naman, ito na talaga, magpaproceed na tayo. I'm hoping that this is going to be quick though. Now, don't forget to follow me in all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave, except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I have a Facebook page. It's Neil Gave. And I also have a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Gave. All the links is going to be in the description box. Check them out. All right? So, magpupusin na tayo. Hindi ko na patatagalin pa. Handa na ba kayo? Handa na. Hingang malalim. Kasi, eto na. Let me share to you the objectives. So, on this lecture, we are going to discuss the following. What is dissociative disorders? We're going to answer the question, what are the dissociative disorders? So, may mga klase po ito. We're also going to discuss the causes, the clinical manifestations, the medical management, including some medical management is your pharmacologic management. Ano-ano ba yung mga treatment medications na, na na tinitake na mga pasyenteng o aasahan mong ititake na mga pasyenteng diagnosed with dissociative disorders. And also, this will not be mental health and psychiatric nursing if we're not gonna discuss about the nursing management which include nursing assessment and nursing interventions. Handa na ba kayo? Handa na? Medyo juicy itong discussion na to. And uh, let's begin. <laughs> So let's answer the question, what is dissociative disorders? Ano ba to? Let's make a clinical definition of this. 
Athena. So dissociative disorders are mental disorders that involve problems with memory, identity, emotion, perception, behavior, and sense of self. All right, involve problems with memory. So when you think about dissociative disorders, you think about these following factors. May problema sila sa memory, pag-alala, sa identity, how they identify others and themselves, sa emotions, they cannot process well when it comes to their emotional feelings, EQ, emotional quotient, perception, behavior, and sense of self. Now, people who have endured physical, sexual, or emotional abuse during childhood are at high risk of acquiring dissociative disorders, meaning patients who who have trauma, who experience trauma, emotional, physical trauma on their early uh, uh, early childhood. Those are the high risk, high factors of patients or people who might develop this type of disorder. The three major dissociative disorders defined in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, ito po ah, yung tinatawag natin DSM-5, include dissociative identity disorder, dissociative amnesia, and deporil, uh, depor, deporsin, ah, ano daw? Hindi ko ma-pronounce. Deep personalization or derealization disorder. So, yun yung three, um, what's this? Three types. Three major types of our dissociative disorder. Ano yun? Identity disorder, dissociative amnesia, and depersonalization or yung de- derealization disorder. Those are the types. So, malilito. Nasa dissociative disorder pa rin tayo. Now, now, I want you to review this study guide and learn more about dissociative disorders, its nursing care management, intervention, and assessment. So, this is going to be your ultimate study guide when it comes to your dissociative disorders. So, na define na natin siya yung clinical meaning niya. Let's proceed. What are the dissociative disorders? Ano ano yung mga sinasabi ko kanina? The essential feature of dissociative disorder is disruption in the usual integrated functions of consciousness, memory, identity, or perception during the periods of intolerable stress, intolerable stress, high stress level, the individual blocks off part of his or her life from consciousness. Meaning, kusa niyang nabablock yung mga parts, yung mga memories na yon kapag nalalagay siya sa sitwasyon na very high yung stress level. Okay, huwag mag-alala kasi i-discuss natin sila isa-isa. Ano-ano ba yung mga types? Ano-ano yung mga types ng dissociative disorders? Eto na tayo. We have, what you might call this, the first one is the dissociative identity disorder. These are the types, ha? Huwag malilito. Pag sinabi mong dissociative di- the associative disorder ito yung mga types una yung identity disorder now first recognize in DSM 3 as multiple personality the associative identity disorder is a is defined in DSM-5 as requiring two or more fully dis- distinct personality states, which in some cultures may be described as an experience of possession, dissociative amnesia. Ano naman to? An ability to recall important personal information, usually of a traumatic or stressful nature. In DSM-5, two primary forms are listed, localized or selective amnesia for specific events and generalized amnesia for identity and life history. A major change in DSM-5 is that <clears throat> the associative uh, fuge is now a, spe- uh, a specifier for dissociation amnesia, not a separate diagnosis as in dsm so, kapag yung mga dissociative amnesia, meron dalawang klase yan, specific and generalized. Meaning, um, people who have this disorder tend to forget a certain bit of their history and because of a 
uh, uh, factor, which is trauma, high level of stress. Meron namang generalized amnesia, meaning major parts of their uh, history, of their life, they cannot recall it because um, the body, when d- during those times, the, the body and the mind un- introduced to a very high traumatic level of stress that the body's adaptive or coping mechanism is to forget that specific um, event so that the body will be able to cope up in that high level of stress. You know what I mean? Yes. Next we have, ito, tatalakayin natin sila, localized amnesia, which is uh, the subcategory of your diso- uh, dissociative amnesia. Ito, localized amnesia, meaning inability to recall or I- all incidents associated with a traumatic event for a specific time period following the event. We also have selective amnesia, inability to recall only certain incidents associated with a traumatic event for a specific period following the event. We also have your generalized amnesia. Di ba daming klase ng amnesia? Hindi lang siyang may amnesia girl. Marami siyang klase. Failure of recall encompassing one's entire life. Entire life, generalized. We also have your continuous amnesia. Pag sinabi mong continuous amnesia, this is the inability to recall events subsequent. Meaning, my continuation of action, my continuation of series, events, something like that. Subsequent to a specific time up to and including the present. We have your sim- uh, system uh, systematized or system... Uh, Ano daw? Systematized amnesia. With this type of amnesia, the individual cannot remember events that relate to a specific category of information, such as one's family or to one particular person or event. And we also have the last one, the associative fugue. Fuge. All right. A sudden unexpected travel away from home or customary work lo- uh, locale with assumption of new identity and inability to recall one's previous identity. The last one is what we call the personalization disorder. Ano naman to? Characterized by a temporary change in the quality of the self-awareness, which often takes the form of feeling of unreality changes in the body image, feelings of detachment from the environment, or a sense of observing oneself from outside the body. Once again, wag malilito, we are this, these are the types and the categories, subcategories of your dissociative disorder. Alright? Magproceed na tayo. What are the causes? Predisposing factors to dissociative disorder include the following. Ito na sila. What are the risk factors? In short, risk factors to having dissociative disorder. One is genetics. DSM-4 uh, TR suggests that D- DID is more common or dissociative disorder is more common in first degree relative of people with a disorder than in the general population. So, so meron kayong lahi na mamana. It's a first line of uh, generation meron na uh, clinically diagnosed with dissociative disorder. There's a big probability that on your generation, you can have it because it runs in the blood. Next is neurobiological. Some clinicians have suggested a possible correlation between neurological alterations and dissociative disorders. Although available information is inadequate, it is possible that dissociative amnesia and dissociative fuge may be rela- uh, related to alterations in certain areas of the body that have to do with the memory. Ma, speaking of memory, ha, huh? I recently uploaded um, a part three discussion of our nervous system, which I talk about the human brain. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung panoorin mo yun, it's Anafi. Anafi lecture of the nervous system. Part three, so meron na tayong one, two, three. Um, and hanggang sa matapos natin yung discussion ng anafi, sho- uh, anatomy and physiology ng ating human nervous system. Panoorin mo yun because that's a great, great lecture. Now, ano pa yung mga factors? We have your psychodynamic theory. 
Pag psychodynamic theory ang pinag-uusapan, sino yung papasok sa utak mo, sa isip mo, sa memory mo? Si Freud. Diba? Si Freud ng 1962, he, he believed that the dissociative disorders or behaviors occurred when individuals repress depressing mental health contents from conscious awareness. Ano ba yung uh, panukala ni Freud? Diba siya yung nagpanukala ng id, ego, and superego? Ayan, ba? Diba? Next, we have the last factor that can contribute to having dissociative disorder is the psychological trauma. And I think this is one of the major causes of having dissociative disorder. A growing body of evidence points to the etiology of dissociative disorder or yung tinatawag natin DID, yun yung acronym niya. DID, as a set of traumatic experiences that overwhelms the individual's capacity to cope by any means other than dissociation. All right? So once again, these are the causes of your DID, DID, dissociative disorder. Now, what are the clinical manifestations? Symptoms of dissociative disorder include the following. Makinig. Ito na. We have your impairment in recall. So, paano ba itong magmamanifest? There is inability to remember specific incidents or inability to recall any of the one's past life, including one's identity. Next, new identity away from home. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? Sudden travel away from familiar surroundings, assumption of new identity with inability to recall the past. Next, multiple identities. Malayo ito sa multiple personality, ha? Multiple personality and dissociative disorders are different. Although, may pagkakapareho sila sa um, clinical manifestations. But let me define to you multiple identities in the concept of what? In the concept of did. Dissociative disorder. Did, wag malilito pag sinabi kong did. D-I-D. That's the abbreviation of dissociative disorder, ha? Huh? Okay. Now, assumption of additional identities within the personality behavior involves transition from one identity to another as a method of dealing with stressful situations. So you see, it's all about stressful, stressful situation, high stress level, traumatic experience from the external environment that leads to a patient to develop the associative disorder. Next, we have your feeling of unreality. Now, there is a feeling of unreality or detachment from a stressful situation, maybe accompanied by dizziness, depression, obsessive rumination, somatic concerns, anxiety, fear of going insane, and a disturbance in subjective sense of time. Once again, these are the clinical manifestations of your did. Magproceed na tayo. What are the medical management? Kung masyado mabilis yung discussion, wag ka mag You can pause the video. You can turn it back. I am going to divide this by uh, chapters. So, kung may parte ka na gusto mong balikan, balikan mo lang. I-click mo lang kasi naka-chapters ito. Now, Patients who are survivors of extensive childhood abuse frequently present complicated clinical dilemmas. The following are the psychological management for dissociative disorders. Medical management. Ito na. <clears throat> Una, encourage healthy coping behaviors, coping mechanisms. That's what we're talking about. The primary focus is to help patients learn to control and contain their symptoms. Patients must learn to deal with the association flashbacks and intense effects such as rage, terror, and despair. Next, logging and monitoring emotions. Very important. Or pwede rin natin silang tawaging journaling. Okay, one way to help patients begin to work with their sense of unpredictability is to have them keep a log of their emotions, logging daily. What are their feeling? Para hindi para any time na makakalimutan nila yung certain emotions na yon, malalaman natin yung triggering factor. Matitrace back natin kung ano yung triggering factor na nagte-trigger sa kanila to manifest dissociative disorders, okay? Now, your symptoms. Next one is developing a crisis plan. Preparation. Teaching patients to develop a list that region are, ranges from simple to complex activities is helpful. Once again, these are the clinical, man, uh, clinical management. 
of your medical management of your did. So kung mapapansin mo, ano siya, more on behavioral changes, more on um, coping mechanisms on how are you going to handle stress when they talk about the medical aspect of dealing with did. Alright? Na mag-proceed na tayo. Ano naman yung pharmacologic management? Medications for the patients with dissociative disorder include the following. Ito na. Apat po yung nilista ko dito. But all of these medications are what we call the neuroleptics. A typical neuroleptic such as arip, uh, aripiprazole, olanzapine, quetiapine, and zyprasidone are the accepted mode of treatment for dissociative disorders. Ano ulit yon? Ano yung apat na medication na commonly ina-administer sa mga pasyente diagnosed with DID? Ayon yung aripri, aripiprazole, olanzapine, quetiapine, and zyprasidone. Zyprasidone. Mapapansin mo yung olanzapine kadalasan binibigay yan saan? Sa mga bipolar patients. Pero pwede rin sila Kasi nga, pwede rin sila saan? Sa mga patients diagnosed with dissociative disorders. Neuroleptics. Those are the types of medications given to them. Tapos na tayo sa pharmacological management, ha? Kung nakaabot ka, bago tayo mag-proceed, kung nakaabot ka sa part na to, kung di ka pa nagsasubscribe, nakakahiya naman sa iyo. Magsubscribe ka na, okay? Now, mag-proceed na tayo. Exciting part ito. Nursing management na nga. Patapos na tayo sa ating lecture for today. On the following slides, we're going to discuss two things when it comes to nursing management. Nursing assessment and nursing interventions. Okay? The nursing management of the patients with dissociative disorder include the following. Dinivide ko sila. Unahin na natin. Nursing assessment. How are you going to perform nursing assessment to patients with uh, dissociative disorder? Una dyan, psychiatric interview. History taking. Very important as your baseline data. Kung nakapag-duty na kayo sa mental ward, nakapag-duty na kayo sa isang mental institution, makikita nyo doon sa chart nila, Diyos ko, punong-puno ng sulat. Yung kanilang history taking, eh, talaga namang very, very thorough. Because those are the factors na babalik-balikan ng psychiatric doctor. Um, every time... They, they, they will try to diagnose and to rule out certain disorder for the patient. History taking is a must when diagnosing any type of uh, mental illness. Okay. Now, psychiatric interview. The psychiatric interview must contain a description of the client's mental status with a thorough description of the behavior, flow of thought and speech. Affect through processes and mental content, sensorium and intellectual, res intellectual resources, cognitive status, insight, and judgment. So those are the key points that should be included in the psychiatric interview. Malino ba yon? Malinao. Now, when it comes to nursing interventions, I list down a few things here for your guide. Alright? So, nursing interventions for dissociative disorders are the following. Next. Next. First one is promote client safety. Very important. Safety po. Pag nag-discuss ka ng mental health sa mga pasyente, ang ultimate goal as a nurse is to promote safety. Reassure, reassure client of safety and security by your presence. Dissociative behaviors may be frightening to the client. Assess for stressors. Paano mo to gagawin? Identity, identify stressors that participate in severe anxiety. This information is necessary to the development of an effective plan of a client care and problem resolution. Remember one of the, what's this? Medical management is to prepare. And the logging behaviors, planning for crisis, and also uh, coping mechanisms. Those are the medical management. Ito nung gagawin mo, assess for stressors. Next, explore client's feelings. Explore feelings that client experience in response to the stressor. Help client understand that the dis disequilibrium felt is acceptable indeed. Even expected in times of severe stress. Encourage methods for coping 
uh, methods for coping. Ibig sabihin, i-discuss mo na yung methods, uh, coping mechanisms nila. Coping behaviors. Have client identify methods of coping with stress in the past and determine whether the response was adaptive or maladaptive. Selective process to yung ititingnan mo na alin yung effective coping mechanism and alin yung ineffective coping mechanism. The last one is enhance client's self-esteem. Provide positive reinforcement for clients' attempts to change. Positive reinforcement enhances self-esteem and encourage repetition of desired behaviors. And enhance client self-esteem, hindi mo siya bibigyan ng false hope, ha? You really want to deal, you really want to attach yourself and attach the patient to, you have to be that anchor that attaches the patient to the reality. False positive reassurance, it's a big no-no. Asking questions about why. Why makes your client put I put your clients in a state of defense? So you want to tweak your questions like when you try to elaborate what they feel, when you try to explore about what they're feeling and their thoughts, you want to remove the why and instead of saying the why or asking questions that starts with why, you can start like what do you feel? Would you tell me more about the situation? and how you were able to manage it, navigate it, those types of questions, okay? Once again, these are the nursing interventions that involved in handling patients with diagnosis of DID, the associative disorders. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you learned something today. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. You let me know if you have other nursing discussions, nursing topics, nursing lectures that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Habangan nyo nga po yung next upload natin sa mga susunod na araw because that's going to be amazing. And another lecture, another time for you to learn. Thank you so much for coming into my channel and choosing to learn about nursing today and joining our class. I want you to give yourself a big round of of applause. Tulungan nyo na nga ako, ipamalitan nyo na sa Radyong Sayram, pinakabago, pinakafresh, at ang pinakalibreng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I have Facebook page. This video lecture, this video material is going to be available on my Facebook page. I will upload it there. And if you want a copy of this um of this lecture for your own personal reviewer or for your discussion you have to i think i made like i turned on the patreon um patreon be a member of this channel and then i will send you one of you have to choose which category you want and then i will send you the lecture material okay now uh yeah yun lang ang ating discussion for today i'll see you again just in case nobody told you this nobody tell you this yet i love you i'm proud of you and i wish you good luck in everything that you do you deserve the best have a good one